doing that, man. Um, nobody ever put me in a comic book before, man. Um, you can't say that anymore. Nah, man. I'm, 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 um, i definitely appreciate that, man. Um, salute to you, man. Milwaukee police have one fewer reason to pursue a fleeing driver. A recent policy change means officers can no longer chase mobile drug traffickers unless they are wanted in a major drug investigation. Jeez. Oh, my gosh. They're going to be like just mad dogs wild just running in the streets and you can't do shit about it. That's what encouraged them to flee because think about it if they can't pursue you if you flee yeah i'm fleeing crazy because it's like all right see, look oh, you can't chase me now i'm twerking yeah, away a guy out of jail free yeah wasn't there a mayor or a governor i don't know if this passed or not but she's trying to make it so that you can't use what you find in the car as evidence it's Kim yeah. Fox, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, man? Where where's this uh, article? Where's this story from? Uh, do you know? It's Milwaukee. But here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is all being done to lessen the Sun Man prison population. And all it's gonna do is increase it by emboldening them. <laughs> You're just gonna increase it. Yeah, well, what's going to end up happening is these guys are just going to build up until they do something that you could put them in jail for. So exactly. you're probably not going to change the crime. You're just going to make life worse for everybody and the same amount of criminals, only they're a little bit older now. <laughs> but at least in that case, they get to say, well, you know, it's less crime on the books because. You That's know, another thing I think they're trying to see. When they kept racial statistics, when they started doing that, I think they thought. Hey, all this stuff is gonna backfire, and we're gonna be able to show like these this racial discrimination or some shit that just showed like not it just was worse for them. So they're trying to they're trying to get rid of it. They're trying to stop yeah. getting racial statistics, so you can't see that shit anymore. Yeah, Everyone like can see it. You don't need no statistics. You just need eyeballs. Yeah, it's, it's like the same <laughs> yeah, thing as um when they. In these schools, when they try to change the criteria and the grading standards, yeah, exactly, it's all to massage the reality of what's really going on, bro. Yeah, you don't right. even need any eyeballs, new guy. You don't even need any eyeballs for this. Yeah, one. yeah. It's like they yeah. want to change the system so that you take the top ten percent of every school in the college. It's like, yeah, well, if I get on the fucking short bus, of course I'm gonna be the smartest. Like, what the fuck? But here's the thing, though. You know, what they end like, up doing. Is they end up sending sons to fucking schools that they're vastly unqualified for, and they all fuck right. out in the first semester. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's why you get such a high black dropout rate because they send them to places yeah. they're not qualified, and yeah. even the smart ones, like even the ones that are in like the top 80th percent in math or something, you send them to fucking MIT. They're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like exactly, they flunk out the first. Semester. That's the thing about it that no one wants to talk about. They don't flunk out the second semester. These sons flunk out the first semester. Or they switch their major to something retarded like yeah, black studies. Major, yeah. yeah, but even even then, the work. Because here's the thing you don't understand too about those schools. It's not necessarily the um, difficulty of the work. It's the load. Yeah, the pace, you know, the volume. Yeah. The low, the workload, like the yo, you got assignments, and you don't get. Remember, sons are coming from schools where, um, now since like maybe what uh, five or six years ago, you don't have to turn your work in on time, as long as you turn it in by the end of the semester, you get credit for it. Yeah, um, or if you color the circle green within the lines, you get an A. Yeah, you know, and, and if you, if you, um. It's it's um it's like illegal for them to like give a son man like a bad grade or something on a project unless like he gets a chance to redo it or some shit. Like you get like a redo, you get to do your assignment over again or some shit like that. They they got now where if you if you if you get a bad grade, you get to do it over again and then get and then that second grade is the grade they keep and all types of shit. Um 
like, like even when I was in school, like the tests, I would get extra time. They would give me extra time, like where it's like uh, um, the test would be time. So it's, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe an hour or so or 50 minutes, whatever the class period was. But me as a son, man, I would get extra time. So I could be in that joint. Yeah. Until I was you done, know. right? need to tell them yeah you need to tell them like i operate on cpt so i start yeah. the test an hour later than everybody yeah so it's like <laughs> it's like it's like all that is not going to be there with you when you get to the ivy leagues so you basically you did you did whatever you did with all that shit helping you and then you go to a place that's a thousand times harder than that and they don't give you none of that bullshit. Now. Right. Or just imagine if you get a job somewhere, like, and you have to produce. So like, you, you have to produce out. results, and you can't do it. Yeah. You flunk out yeah. quick. Milwaukee police have one fewer reason to pursue a fleeing driver. A recent policy change means officers can no longer chase mobile drug traffickers unless they are wanted in a major drug investigation. Ben Jordan is on our new specialty reporting team. We call it Lighthouse. As part of Lighthouse, Ben has investigated police pursuits and the dangers that go with them. Tonight, Ben goes. This policy change essentially applies to suspects fleeing police after hand-to-hand -hand drug deals. This marks a Milwaukee police chief's first substantial pursuit policy change since he was authorized to set department policy last summer. In this 360 report, you'll hear from the mayor about why he supports the policy update. A uh, I think we know what the man's supposed yeah. to do. Yeah. We figured it out. <laughs> Lawmaker reveals a change he believes the department should be making instead. The police chief shares whether he's open to more policy changes. But we start with the perspective of a man who's suffering because of a driver who fled police. You can see his passion. You can see his change in demeanor, you know, to just knew he, he had got it now. And he was on his way. It's an unbearable pain. The son had just turned his life around. Who believes that? Who fled police. You could see his passion. You could see his change in demeanor, you know, to just knew he, he had got it now. And he was on his way. It's an unbearable pain for Anthony Smith. When you lose your child, you lose a part of you. Having to celebrate his son's birthday at the cemetery by placing flowers and balloons at his grave. This is what I'm left with because of something senseless. Amari was driving home back in February when gas station surveillance video shows a man fleeing police run a red light at 20th and Burleigh and T-bone Amari's car. Oh, I went numb. I went numb. The yeah, so his son, like, regardless of what his son was, he literally was just driving down the street. Yeah, man, he's his his dad said he had he had the passion, and I agree. He probably had a passion for for crime, bro. He put his <laughs> heart and soul in every carjacking, you know, every robbery. Yeah, we see through the coded language at this point. Yeah, this guy, this guy, he was just riding down the street, and this fucking son man T boned him. And some man, when they're fleeing. The recklessness with which they flee is insane because it's like they just don't care. It's, like, it's just so brazen. It's just like you can't even comprehend it. Yeah, man. You got to give a shout out to the West. He just dropped 50. Oh, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, salute to him. He said, he said, you're basically saying that the Black Phantom is actually helping the Sun community by killing and targeting the criminal sons. Oh, okay. Okay. That's 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 my role in the um that's 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 what um, my character's doing. Salute, man. Yeah, definitely, the, man. The fucked up part is that no son is gonna see it that way, reading it. <laughs> you could have gonna a, be like, yo, why you why you targeting all these criminals? What the you need to go worry about the white people. You could have uh, a powerful cool. villain that goes around raising the uh the souls of the you know innocent black teens killed by police yeah bro this yeah they no son is gonna is, every son is gonna miss the plot on that one bro oh yeah that 20th and burleigh and t-bone amari's car oh, crash, crash, crash. i went numb i went numb 
The fleeing driver tried to run away while. Of course, they never get hurt. They never get hurt when they, when they kill people. They always get out the car and run away. He's like sprinting, like he's like you can clock him. A fucking NFL scouts are showing up to the jailhouse when they catch him. Like, yo, you got any fucking, you got any interest in playing in the league or fucking college coaches are coming up to the jailhouse talking about some. You got any eligibility left? And he just killed somebody, like person deader than dead. He just hops out the car, just. Runs a four two forty down the street. In fucking saying man. I went numb. The fleeing driver tried to run away while Amari died at the scene. The anger that I feel is indescribable. The pain is indescribable. Milwaukee police will pursue drivers for several different reasons. Primarily reckless driving, violent felonies, carjackings, and refusing to stop. Oh, MPD's Lord. list used to include low-level drug dealing offenses, but the department did away with that specific reason to pursue last week. The change comes only a month after we expose an 89-mile Milwaukee police pursuit that was initiated for a hand-to-hand -hand drug deal. Oh, watch out, watch out. When police finally arrested the suspect, police reports show all they found was a small amount of marijuana on him. Yeah, because he tossed the rest out the window, you jacket. Yeah, these Dude, people are not street smart at all. <laughs> 89 miles. Damn. 89 miles. Like, that's yeah, just <laughs> that's it's insane. Like, but even if the guy only had that much weed, it's like the type of person that would do that should be behind bars. No, no, that's <laughs> right, though. There's there's no way he had just that. He threw up. No, no, there is. Yeah, I'm sure window. he did. Yeah. He's not, he doing, not here for his son, man. Yo, he had 89 miles to throw to get the shit Yeah. Out. <laughs> <laughs> he probably had a ratchet in there with him. Probably some other type of shit in there. Yeah, man. I mean, just think about this, man. Like, that, that's a great point that Soul made. The fact that that guy who did that, the charge, that's the charge that gets dropped almost all the time. Fleeing, eluding police is, gets dropped. Like, when you go to court, I like say you rob somebody or you kill somebody, they drop that charge and charge you with the big shit. So, so this guy did all of that, caused all these resources, for a charge that gets dropped 99% of the time. It's just insane, man. Respect. Police reports show all they found was a small amount of marijuana on him. Mayor Cavalier Johnson tells me he supports the policy shift. They have to balance public safety and restraint with these pursuits. And the police office, the police officers in the Milwaukee Police Department, they do do that on a constant basis basis. They do do that, uh, working to make sure that there that there is a proper balance. MPD data shows less than 5% of all police chases in Milwaukee are initiated because of mobile drug dealing. That totals up to a few more than 300 pursuits over the past six years. And I think the police department uh, is doing the right thing here. The change adjusts a policy put in place back in 2017 in response to concerns at the time about a surge of hand-to-hand -hand drug deals in the community. It just gives one more win to the bad guys, sadly. State Representative Bob Donovan says Republican lawmakers made a point last summer to take policy decisions away from the Fire and Police Commission and give that power to the chief. Donovan doesn't think Milwaukee police should be taking away reasons to chase. Instead, he believes MPD should add a tool to force drivers to stop pit maneuvers. I've seen these chases go for miles and miles and miles. Come on, put an end to it. Many of our suburban departments, Waukesha sheriffs and all of these departments allow this, train for this. I think it's high time Milwaukee does the same. About a month ago, I sat down with Milwaukee Police Chief Jeffrey Norman. We talked about police pursuits, department policies, and the potential for new intervention tactics. Those other particular maneuvers come with dangers, and we've seen those particular situations, especially if you pit or you have somebody try to box in, you're putting yourself in close proximity to the particular driver, and we all know that many drivers are armed and dangerous in regards to some of the situations we have, so we have to be very careful. Currently, the only intervention tactic Milwaukee officers are authorized to use are stop sticks, MPD data shows they are deployed in just 7% of chases. 
I'm always open to any particular type of safe methodologies or tools, but it comes at a cost. And also that we need to make sure that it has the proper training and also the proper funding for it. At the end of the day, MPD's policies on whether to chase have real world impacts, as Anthony and his family will attest. I don't want his death to be in vain. I don't want how I feel to go unnoticed. Reporting in Milwaukee, Ben Jordan, TMJ4 News. Man, mm. what the fuck, man? What about all the people you put in danger? Yeah. yeah, when a parent loses a kid, they go, they they sometimes do shit just to, like, their logic is just fucked. It's, it's fucked. Man, um... I might have to go to Rumble in, in like, two, man, because I can't do... I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this story. Oh, no. Milwaukee Public Schools is hosting a community input meeting today as the district continues searching for feedback on its strategic plan. Jared Adams is one of two fathers Sydney Yor spoke with ahead of tonight's meeting. She's live this morning outside Rufus King High School with what he had to say. Sydney, good morning. Good morning. The Milwaukee Public School mm -hmm. District is asking mm -hmm. its community members for feedback as they look to make plans for their long range facilities master plan. I'm here at Rufus King because this is where that meeting will be held later tonight. And it is actually just where I met Gerald Adams a little bit across the street here. Milwaukee Public Schools is conducting a study of its buildings and how they meet the needs of students and community members. Gerald programs, programs, programs. Um, when we get the stats, wow, how come, yo, we need to like really crack down on like the stats of how much how effective any of this shit is bro not at all it's not at all effective man Zero. Um, I've been, you know, it, it, the way they preach them it's like bro you should be able to have clear demonstrable evidence that this shit actually works bro yeah if they did, did, like yeah. we'd have like whoever whoever could successfully implement a program that could like close the IQ gap permanently by just like two points would win a fucking Nobel Prize. Right. Yeah. Know about but, it. but they, they, even when they get the statistics, that doesn't work. It, it don't matter. It, it doesn't stop. It's, it's too much pain. Like, it's like Head Start. They've already proven that Head Start doesn't do shit. They won't stop it because of the money in it. So. Yeah. The most I've seen is like these types of programs, in particular for IQ, they can like close the gap very very early in life but then it slowly reverts back and it's not even clear if that's just like an artifact of like the testing for iq isn't even very good at a young age it's not even accurate in the first place so it's just yeah all bullshit. I've, I've read that as well that early on people start fairly equal mm. yeah man um it's, it's fixed it's fixed yeah there's nothing you can do about it man um the, denying the denying the gap won't make it go away oh yeah there's one video that i can show you before i go over to, um, to <laughs> yeah facts man um oh okay here goes some yeah, okay we got some stuff man here we go New at 11, a police officer is on the wrong side of the law, accused of driving drunk and assaulting an officer. That's according to Hampton Police. That officer, Carmen Johnson, is facing multiple charges tonight. Whoa. What the hell? What? That's a tranny, bro. Yo, that's a tranny. Yeah. Straight up. It's gotta oh, be. It's the sister. Oh, it's just the sister. Yeah, it could, be, it could just be like a dark butt, but. I think it's a training. New at 11, a police officer is on the wrong side of the law, accused of driving drunk and assaulting an officer. That's according to Hampton Police. That officer, Carmen Johnson, is facing multiple charges tonight. Marta Berglund has more on what police say happened and Johnson's future in law enforcement. Well, the officers that pulled Carmen Johnson over say this all started when she almost hit a cop that had pulled over a different car in Hampton. They say she sped away when they tried to stop her. 
Hampton police charged Portsmouth police officer Carmen Johnson with reckless driving, driving while intoxicated first offense, failure to yield to an emergency vehicle and assault of a law enforcement officer. The charges stem from an incident late Saturday night near Interstate 64 and North Mallory Street. The officers that stopped Johnson say she sped past a separate traffic stop. When they tried to stop her, police say she hit speeds of over 100 miles per hour. When Johnson did pull over, police records state she had glassy eyes and was slurring her words. She allegedly told police she was driving from Norfolk after having one drink. Detectives say they found an open alcohol container in her car and a cup of apparent alcohol thrown in the back seat. The officers wrote in a police report Johnson's blood alcohol content was 0.09. That criminal complaint does not outline why police charged Johnson with battery of an officer, but a Hampton police spokesperson told 13 News Now, quote, during the arrest, an HPD officer was assaulted. Johnson is out on bond, but will appear in court on Wednesday. And as for the future of her law enforcement career, the Portsmouth Police Department said they're working on an internal investigation and Johnson is working a non-law enforcement administrative position. Marta Berglund, 13 News Now. On to a Fox 5 exclusive, a Charlotte woman shot at a Buckhead club in a deadly Mother's okay. Day shooting speaks publicly for the first time. The 24-year-old came to Atlanta to celebrate a friend's birthday party when gunfire erupted and two people were killed. Fox News Anjali Proctor joins us from Grady Memorial Hospital where the victim was released this afternoon. Anjali. Good afternoon, Courtney. Well, okay. Lauren Moore says her world has been turned upside down. She said she was actually shot in both of her legs and she'll have to now learn how to walk again. She says this whole thing is so ironic because she came to Atlanta to celebrate and have fun. Atlanta police say bullets started flying at the 1145 lounge on Peachtree Road in Buckhead in the early morning hours of Mother's Day. Six people got shot, two of them were killed. Lauren Moore, who is a bus driver and bartender in Charlotte, oh, is goodness. thankful her life was spared. But she says she will never forget being shot in both legs. Everything was leaving out of me. I just had to fight. All I said was I had to be here for my mom, my siblings, and my friends. And I just kept on fighting. If I didn't fight, I probably would have been here. Moore underwent two leg surgeries and two blood transfusions at Grady. I'm in a city that I don't live in. I just came to enjoy myself for the weekend, and then this happens. She is concerned now about beginning nursing school next month because she can no longer work her two jobs. I was actually working two jobs so I can cover my nursing school. Um, I'm not going to stress myself out. I'm going to figure it out. Her yeah, because you ain't going to get no go for me because it was some sons that shot your ass. <laughs> your go for me going to be fucking. She better be um realistic for what she asked for. Maybe 10000 Ask for 10000 Hope you get it. You ain't getting no big sum like if it was a cop or a white person did something to you. I'm not going to stress myself out. I'm going to figure it out. Her attorney, Terrence Madden, says the city should crack down on club owners like 1145. Look at this scene, though. Look at look at that. Mm. Look, look at this scene. Hey. She, it's just her, this guy, and this person. If, if she had been, if, if a white dude had fucking called her the N-word, man, it would be fucking 20 people right here standing right here. The city should crack down on club owners like 1145 who do not have adequate security to operate. If you're going to run a place where you're entrusted with someone's health and welfare and you put security that would allow somebody to have guns when you already have a bad record, that's just not something the city of Atlanta can stand. Now we checked with Atlanta police today. They have made no arrests in this deadly shooting. Lauren's GoFundMe page will be on our Fox 5 website as she attempts to pay for nursing school. And the club owners put a statement on their social media that says in part, the safety and well-being of our patrons and staff 
have always been our paramount concern. We are live at Grady Memorial Hospital. I'm Julie mm. Proctor. What a horrifying experience for somebody just visiting our city, Angelique Banks. I can't believe this has happened to my son. It's like a parent's worst nightmare. A devastated mother speaking out tonight on the deadly shooting of her teenage son at a carnival in Delaware. As police continue to search for the gunman, the family is searching for closure. It has started this shit, carnival season. Shooting niggas at Cuddles. Tuesday night and the big story on Action News is the new information into the murder of 16-year-old Zykeer Flowers. He was shot 10 days ago at a carnival outside of the Concord Mall in Wilmington. Tonight, police are hoping a substantial reward will help in the search for his killer. Action News reporter Charles Watson is live in Wilmington now with the full story. Charles. Yeah, hey, Rick, I spoke to the mother, Zakir Flowers, who says she's still in shock over her son's tragic murder more than a week ago. Tonight, the grieving mother is pleading with her son's killer to come forward and do the right thing. I can't believe this has happened to my son. It's like a parent's worst nightmare. Atidia Flowers says she hears about gun violence in Wilmington often, but never expected her 16-year-old son, Zakir Flowers, would... Wait a second. She hears about gun violence in Wilmington often but never expected her. But that's like the sun logic, right? And it's like all my children can be murderers, but like it would be impossible to imagine like me getting killed or one of them getting killed. It's just the sun, the sun mind. This has happened to my son. It's like a parent's worst nightmare. Octavia Flowers says she hears about gun violence in Wilmington often, but never expected her 16-year-old son, Zakir Flowers, would fall victim to it nearly three years after her fiancé was killed. For my child. Jesus lost Christ. <laughs> yeah, it can't, it can't be changed. <laughs> it can't can't really be changed it's just it's just not not gonna work out like that no pattern recognition like if if we were on year like 10 of this shit i'd be like no we can change it but we're on like year 401 of this so it's not really gonna change and listen man i will say this this woman right here, the trauma she's going through, man. Like, just think about, like, if she was human, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? If she wasn't a proto. <laughs> yeah. If she yeah. was human, yeah. she would be like, that's a lot to deal with, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If she could fully experience the full spectrum of emotions. Yeah, if her abstract thinking was... <laughs> yeah. Well, but it, it, it protects her. Think about how lucky she is to not have it's that. It's true. It's, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, it is a double-edged sword. But but on this this edge of the sword, like... She'll do man, all right. Yeah, the man she was about... she she The man who she was wanted to marry was killed before they had a chance to get married. Then her 16-year-old son is killed three years later. I mean, these dudes aren't like died they didn't die of covid or some shit like that these dudes were murdered and her son was killed at a carnival <laughs> like, yeah like this shit this shit may if, if she was a glider it may have caused the glider to commit suicide over it exactly right exactly so so it's a double-edged sword but she's gonna get through this because like she's already fucking over it let's be honest like yeah she's already she's over a, it. yeah she, she's He's already on to the next thing, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm not even trying to be, like, blatantly racist or anything, but I can't help but notice, like, in these interviews, like, they don't seem as upset most of the time as you would expect from a glider person. They just don't. Yeah. I mean, I will say this, though, man. Like, most most moms on here, when I see them, regardless of race, they're, 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 um, I, I always expect more. I expect more. I expect you know them to be more upset than they really are. Than they are, but yeah, sons more sons 
kind of get over it more. The thing about sons, we have two different um scenarios with sons. So we have sons when when it's a white person or it's a cop, and then it's falling out. Right, <laughs> right. Playing. Yeah, they go mammy mode, mammy mode. And you know, fake yeah. this shit, and got him to be held up, and well, yeah, all that bullshit. I thought we and were past we, this as a country. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like we have two, so I can, you can kind of get confused, you know what I'm saying, with sons. But when it's a son that killed their 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 loved one, yeah, it's usually like, you know, like it's almost as if like they, you know what I'm saying, like they like they went to a restaurant and the food took too long. <laughs> it's like kind of like that type of thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> well, well let, let me revise maybe my statement a bit. It's like, okay, maybe like gliders aren't necessarily like more emotional in these like TV interviews because, you know, like a lot of the time you're right. Like most people are not as emotional as you'd expect. However, the difference to me seems is like when you have these interviews, like just the words and the thoughts that the gliders express, like mm -hmm. make it seem like they understand the possible consequences that could have led to these actions that lead to these events happening. Whereas the sons, they're just like, why is this happening? They don't seem to yeah. like understand that like, yo, yeah. if your kid's a drug dealer, he might get killed. Yeah, the, the gliders seem a little more dead on the inside. And yeah. they also thank the fucking police and the surrounding society for cleaning up the mess too. Sometimes they even apologize to everybody else. <laughs> right. Yeah, true. Yeah, they apologize. That too. And my child lost his life. Like, one of the worst phone calls you could ever get. That call came on the night of May 11th after Octavia says Zakir went with friends to have some fun at Lead Fest, an anti-violence carnival in the parking lot of Concord Mall. It was an okay. anti-violence carnival. Oh, yeah, my you already God. Know. You already know. The irony. Oh my God! An anti-violence carnival. Nah, sh she'll get over it. She she's gonna be good. She's gonna be good. Don't worry about it. According to Delaware State Police, a fight broke out between several people near the entrance of the carnival. An unknown individual pulled a gun and fired several shots, hitting Zakir and another 17-year-old victim. Both were rushed to Christiana Hospital, where the 17-year-old victim, while seriously injured, survived. No kid deserved this to happen to him, but, like, why me? His mother tells Action News she had just spoken to the 16-year-old about recording a Mother's Day video for his grandmother. She says Zakir, an aspiring sports entertainment lawyer, was someone who was always willing to do whatever he could to put a smile on the faces of others. And he had big plans like any other teen his age as he looked ahead to his junior year in high school. Just got his ID about a month ago. You would have thought it was a license. He was so excited. Like, he just was a different kid. Like, everybody loved God. Making it even harder for Octavia to comprehend That's the 16-year-old's unexpected death. She has this message for Zakir's killer. If you see this and you're out there, just turn yourself in. Yeah, all right. Yeah, and the family tells me a funeral service will be held for Zakir in the coming days. Delaware Crime Stoppers is now offering a $5,000 reward for anyone with information leading to an arrest in this case. If you have any. Yo, um, let's, let's, let's all go over to Rumble, man. Rumble, so I can do this story. Everybody yeah, man. When, go ahead. So when you got a carnival full of. Black people, man, every one, every one of them workers has to be ready. I mean, even the fucking clowns, man. Like, instead of having a bottle of seltzer water, it needs to be mace so they can spray some crazy black dude. Yeah, no, nah, God really. do. <laughs> you know, like... You never fuck. know. You never know one of these sons is just going to erupt and, and just be belligerent and destroy some shit. But you know what was so funny? Remember, remember the whole Disneyland thing? I remember when that went around. Everybody was like, "Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! It's happened at Disneyland!" And I'm like, "Dude, this is just an average day. Like, this is just like some people fighting. Like, what? The yeah, they're acting like they never saw like a black person chimp out before. Yeah, yeah. And then they were like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "This is relatively mild. <laughs> this is America." Yeah. yeah. Everybody over to Rumble, man. Rumble, I'm about to do the main event story on Rumble, man. Salute to everybody. See you over on Rumble. Uh.